over to the other side of this tent. Or follow my voice. Sometimes people don't know that there's a second side, and they hear my voice. All right, guys. So this is the practice hatch. There are five more hatches in the submarine. You must be able to get through this without any assistance in order to qualify to tour the growler. Please also know if you are claustrophobic and or have motion sickness, today it is a little bit, the submarine is a little bit rocky, so just know that you guys are really good to go. Oh, tall people, watch your heads. It really hurts when you hit your heads. Oh god, this door is heavy. Grab it. <laughs> the former USS Growler, a guided missile submarine that served during the Cold War. I'd like to share some background on Growler to prepare you for your visit and give you a better understanding of this submarine's significance. By the time I'm finished, you'll be ready to enter the submarine. Growler served with the U.S. Navy from 1958 through 1964 during the height of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. Growler represents an early effort by the Navy to use submarines as launch platforms for nuclear missiles. Crowder carried four Regulus-1 cruise missiles. The Regulus-1 missile was essentially a radar-guided jet aircraft that carried a nuclear warhead. Each missile had a maximum range of 500 miles and was powerful enough to destroy an area as large as New York City. Crowder was a key part of the United States nuclear deterrence strategy. The United States believed that the threat of nuclear weapons lurking offshore would deter the Soviet Union from launching a strike against the United States. To accomplish this mission, Crowley patrolled off the Soviet Union's Pacific coastline, staying hidden <coughs> below the surface as much as possible. The crew stood ready for an order to fire the submarine's nuclear weapons at targets in the Soviet Union. To launch the missiles, Crowley needed to be on the surface like it is right now. The missiles had to be unloaded and launched one by one. Crowley's crew practiced launching the Regulus many times. Thankfully, they never received an order to launch an attack. Many crew members believed that if they launched the missile, it would be quickly discovered and destroyed by the enemy. They lived with this risk every day while on patrol. Growler's longest time on patrol was 72 days. Two months at sea may not sound so difficult, but on a submarine, it's a different story. Growler's crew numbered from 90 to 100 men. They worked, slept, ate, and relaxed inside these close quarters. While on patrol, Growler stayed below the surface. The crew could not leave the submarine. They had no sunshine, no starlight, and very little fresh air. As you move through the submarine, imagine what life is like for these men, and keep in mind that every single one of them served on Growler voluntarily. As technology improved, newer, larger submarines with more sophisticated missiles made Growler obsolete. It was decommissioned in 1964 after six years of service. The Navy planned to use Growler as target practice for another submarine, until it was rescued by his intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. In 1988, Congress turned control of Growler over to the museum, and it opened to the public a year later. Growler is now the only U.S. Navy missile submarine open to the public. It is remarkably intact from its Navy service and retains most of its original features. We ask for your help in preserving this historic vessel. Please do not touch anything inside the submarine, and do not bring in food or drinks. You will be entering momentarily. Staff inside the submarine will be happy to answer any questions you have. Feel free to take photos, but remember that there will be other groups coming in behind you. Thank you, and welcome aboard.
What's going on? Well, we're going through the submarine. I know. <laughs> My submarine. Yes. It takes three people to drive the submarine. Okay. Come on. Oh, alrighty. This one steers. This one does the depth, how deep we go, and this one does the angle the boat goes up and down at. These Ooh. three sit here for six hours at a time, and these three are the youngest boys on the submarine. Your first job on a submarine is to drive. Wow. On every U.S. submarine. Wow, that's impressive. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I lived on submarines for six years. I started out on a diesel boat much like this, called the Sea Leopard, and then I went to the Flasher and then the Ray, which are nuclear fast attack submarines. Wow. And my job is I'm a torpedo man. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah. Thank you for your service. You're very welcome. <laughs> All right. Watch out, ladies, people pass. Now, these are the... Two see. periscopes. Two Every periscope. submarine has two. Two, okay. Very impressive. This is the control room. This is where they control the ship from. I was trying to go out to the high port. Yep. That's where the high port thing is, where you can target for everything. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Be safe in New York. Thank you. We are. We're yeah. loving it. <laughs>